at some point, if you get to state and worlds or not, your season will end. Your life journey will continue. Did the students learn something new? Did they learn from their failures? And did they apply them to the VEX IQ challenge? If so, they and you had a very successful season. Hi everyone, I'm Katie Towson, head coach at Westchester Intermediate School. We're a school of fifth and sixth grade students, which places us in the VEX IQ elementary division. I personally teach fifth grade math and science. The 2019-2020 season was the third year of robotics at Westchester. Hello, I am Brad Sweet, coach of robotics at WIS. In the last two years, I have coached VEX IQ at WIS. Westchester Robotics is available to any student at our school. During the scored away season, we had seven travel teams and five club teams, about 70 students. The travel teams are comprised of students wanting to use recess and or study hall for robotics at least two days per week, if not daily. The club teams are initially those students wishing to meet once per week after school. Some do eventually come in more often. As with all sports, orchestra, chess club, etc., the student must put the time in to be successful. The team that went to the VEX Worlds in 2018-2019 was in the robotics room five days a week, all season. All seven of our travel teams qualified for state and two of our club teams also qualified. That makes nine of our 12 total teams. Of these nine teams, six of them qualified based upon the Excellence Award and the other three qualified from winning the Teamwork Champion Award. Throughout the season, our teams also won multiple design, skills, and Teamwork Champion Awards. In all, nine, our nine teams won a total of 21 awards this season at the various events we attended. Two teams from our school also qualified for Worlds this year. One team qualified from receiving the Build Award at State, and the other team qualified based on their State Skills Score ranking. The five sets of awards listed here are offered at most local events. We will address these in this order during the rest of our presentation. With an emphasis on the Excellence Award, and after that, some insight on what makes Westchester successful. The first award that we're going to cover is the Teamwork Champion Award. This is the only mandatory event that teams must be prepared to participate in. The tournament software generates alliances on the day of the event, and it is the expectation that the teams check in and are ready to play. The Teamwork Champion Award is presented to each of the two teams on the winning alliance in the Teamwork Challenge Finals matches. Generally, this two-team alliance qualifies for the state championship. At this time, we would like to take a brief pause to see if anyone has any questions so far before we begin discussing the other awards. Teams are not required to participate in the robot skills competition at a tournament. Each team will get three chances at driving and three chances at programming. They will need to line up at the skills field and drive on a first come, first serve basis. Some tournaments only run skills until noon and some will run skills until 2.30 or 3. It is our experience that having skills available as late as possible allows all teams the best opportunity to get their six drives in if they need to. However, you need the volunteers available to do so. Teams participating in only one of the two skills challenges will receive a zero score 
in the challenge in which they do not participate. The skills scores are tracked in robotevents.com and we have a link attached at the end of the presentation to give you the specific location. As teams continue to improve their skills score, only the highest number is listed in the skills standings. Once the state tournament is filled with teamwork champions and excellence award winners, duplicates are then removed and the remaining spots are filled using the skills standings about March 1st. This means there are several teams with lower skill scores that are invited to the state championship. This is also true of the world championships, but with fewer skill teams being invited. Westchester always struggles with programming skills at state as the fields are elevated 18 inches off the floor. This year, we are going to keep one field on the floor and we're going to elevate one field 18 inches to see if it makes any difference as we go through our practice and design and coding in the, throughout the season. Also, we have not used gyros in the past, but we'll be doing so this season to see if they make a difference for us. A note based on Dan Mance's and Grant Cox's town hall on July 1st of this year, it is apparent that robot skills only events will be occurring. Some may be part of the traditional tournament, but others may be video from school or in home, or who knows? We will all be learning as we go forward. All right, next award up is the Design Award. This award is going to the team that demonstrates the most effective and efficient robot design process after judges have reviewed the engineer design notebook and interviewed all of the teams. We will talk about the engineering notebooks later on in this presentation in more in depth. For the design award, the students must be able to discuss the changes they've made throughout the season, problems and solutions that have been made to the robot, how the robot works, etc. However, we believe that the students must go through a mock interview process at school before going to a tournament. It gets the students prepared to answer questions and it eliminates them talking over one another, looking disinterested, looking around the room, shooting an imaginary basketball, etc. during the actual interview. You would not believe some of the things that we see during our mock interviews at school. Many of our incoming fifth graders have never been interviewed, interviewed before, so this practice run helps eliminate some of their nerves. This is also a fantastic job to give to parent volunteers who are willing to help at practice. Engineering notebooks need to be turned in at the check-in time to be considered for this award. The judge advisor should assign judges to teams in order to interview them and make sure that all of the teams are interviewed. Interviews should be conducted at the team's pit area. All teams will be interviewed, but contenders for the Design and Excellence Awards will have more in-depth interviews and may be cross-interviewed by different judge teams. Therefore, judges will visit all the teams in the pit area during the tournament. This has not happened consistently at competitions in the past. The judges will visit after reviewing all of the engineering notebooks that have been turned in. Deliberations occur after the interviews to determine the winner of this award. The design award does not get a team an invitation to state. Judges award. Judges may or may not decide on a team that deserves special recognition for unique attributes, including special effort and tenacity at the event or other accomplishments that may not fit under existing awards. Many local events do not offer this award. However, at State and Worlds, there are more judged awards, such as the Innovate Award, the Think Award, the Amaze Award, etc. You can go to roboticseducation.org and go to the Judges Guide. We have a link at the back of this presentation which will get you to that specific place. The STEM Research Award. 
The STEM Research Project is an online video challenge only. During the 2019-2020 VAX, it featured the STEM field of science and how robotics can play a role in science, especially in data collection. Each team has the option of participating in a STEM research project. The STEM research project is something that teams may work on outside of team meetings if they choose to. The STEM research award is a four minute video submission turned in before an event. Many events do not offer this award. To learn more, go to robotevents.com and we have a link at the end of this presentation to get you to this document. We will now spend a little bit of time talking about the Excellence Award, the criteria for this award, and then all of the different components of a successful engineering notebook. So the Excellence Award is the highest award presented in the VEX IQ Robotics Competition. This award is given to a team that exemplifies overall excellence in building a high quality robotics program. This team is a strong contender in numerous award categories. The key criteria for the Excellence Award is that the engineering notebook must be submitted, and this usually occurs at the team check-in. They also need to have a high ranking for the design award, the qualification matches, their robot skills score, any other judged awards that might be given at the event. They also will look at the quality of the interview that the team had with the judges, the quality of the robotics program, how the team behaved at the competition, and then whether their work was student-centered. Generally, the Excellence Award winner will qualify for the state championship if there are at least 24 teams in the event. We'll spend the next five slides talking about the engineering notebook in more detail. In the past, only bound engineering notebooks were to be accepted. Uh, I believe that is being looked at. Uh, I think that's still the preference, but around the world, it may not uh, continue that way. The engineering design process is iterative. Many of the items in the list below will be repeated many times throughout the season. So instead of thinking about it as a list, Think about it as a circle. Students identify, define a problem, brainstorm, design ideas to solve the problem, test their ideas, and then continue to improve their design until a solution is reached. Usually after a competition, sometimes, most of the time, the robot is continued to be refined, coatings refined, and students will enc encounter obstacles, successes, and failures, and they have many lessons they learn from these, which then they apply back to the uh, engineering notebook, the process, analyzing the game, listing concepts, selecting approaches, and making this a circle, not a list. Components of a successful engineering notebook. You can see to the right, we have a table of contents from one of our uh, teams this year. And when we start the engineering notebook, we always have them number it from one to 100 or 120, 150. And then the first 10 pages or so are left blank. So the table of contents can grow and you can have some space to write out page numbers, maybe write out a little more detail on what's in those tables of content. So you can see from the table of contents, you have game rules, you have today's builds, sketches of builds. We'll get to some of that in a minute, some pictures. Uh, today's build, what are we doing on this day? Uh, coding towards the bottom, coding for, uh, today's build after a competition. Uh, obviously, the other 
five or six things listed here. Team number on the cover is an absolute. Written in ink with errors crossed out with a single line is an absolute. The notebook cannot be edited. All pages have to be intact. And each page numbered and dated in chronological order. Components of a successful engineering notebook continued. Uh, from one of our teams, we have what they had early on in their book was we require a game page that says here's how the game is played, here's how it looks from above, and what we want are how many points should be scored that should be on the next page. You need to strategize. You need the whole team together to think about how can we do this? What kind of robot can we build? What's our skill level as a team? Are we a new team or are we a team that have been around for a year? As we work through the engineering notebook, get past this page, a lot of that strategy really goes on the next three or four pages, the initial strategy. Team meeting notes as they relate to the design process should be in there. Any brainstorming sessions. You should always have points that are scored that season. Each page should be signed by whoever authored that page. Sometimes it's more than one person. Sometimes it's two or three people. Uh, it needs to be legible. Components of a successful engineering notebook continued. Descriptions, sketches, and pictures of design concepts and the design process. You can see to the left that we have today's build. It has a pretty nice sketch of what's going on with the robot. You can tell the brain, you can tell the wheels, uh, etc. You can see their people's names there. Uh, Obviously, some of them can't quite spell right, but they have crossed them out with one line. But we've also encouraged at times that instead of sketches, we certainly allow pictures of the robot, which obviously, if you're trying to build the robot from the engineering notebook, it's probably a combination of both of those which make a difference. One of the things we like notes and observations from competitions that the teams go to. What are they going to consider in the next design iteration? Notes on video review of in-classroom runs or notes on video review at competition runs. What can they do better? It's much easier to see in a video what you did two days ago than try to remember. Components of a successful engineering notebook continued. Our last one on this topic. As you can see to the right, we have a page again from one of our engineering notebooks. And at the very top is the code that gets printed out. And what this team did is it talked about what the code did, which is something I don't see a lot of in other engineering notebooks. In other words, our code gets a blue cube, a red cube, and three green cubes. And then it talks about the steps, one through seven, grab the red cube. Eight to 22, puts green cube on low green platform. And then you can see at the bottom, 53 to 66, puts green cube on high platform. So they're trying to not only put the code in there, but make it a little more relevant for a judge or someone else to look at this and say, wow, I really know what they did. They know what they did and uh, moved on from there. So that was really good. Something we don't see a lot of, but we think it's a good idea. Uh, a lot of the students use YouTube videos and they see robots they like or parts of robots they like. What we ask them to do is 
refer, put those in your engineering notebook. You know, I saw this YouTube, it was by this person. This is the piece of it that we really liked and we're going to utilize that piece on our robot. We also have, you see other robots at other competitions. So how can you document that and uh, note that and try to reference the team if you can. As a coach who has attended this conference in the past, I know that I was always curious about what my team needed to do in order to be successful. So we thought we would share some of the things that our teams have done throughout the season, which led to us winning 21 awards between our nine teams that attended the state championship. The first reason why our teams are successful is time. Our students put in a lot of time. Many of the travel team students come in before school each day for about 20 minutes. They spend their recess time in the robotics room. Um, if they are caught up in all of their classes, they will spend their SRT, which is our student resource time or similar to study hall in the robotics room, along with our weekly scheduled practices. In the week leading up to a competition, it is not unheard of for us to practice two to three times a week, sometimes including Friday nights if some of our teams are not fully ready for the competition the next day. This allows the teams to do the many things noted in the engineering notebook, along with enhancing their driving and coding skills. The second thing that we do to give our students the best chance to be successful revolves around rubrics and interviews. At the beginning of the season, we go over the VEX IQ rubrics with our students and they receive their own copy. This ensures that our students know exactly what is required of them to be considered for specific awards. They receive a checklist detailing everything that they need to have in their engineering notebook, and those are all of the things that Brad has talked about on previous slides. As I mentioned earlier, we also complete mock interviews with our students so that they know some of the questions they can expect to be asked when it comes to being interviewed at a competition. So why do Westchester teams do well? We've talked about the engineering notebook, but I want to emphasize a couple points again. I am in the classroom robotics room from probably 10.30 to 1 every day. When they come in during their recess or their SRT time, uh, the first thing they need to do and they do do because we enforce it is they write in the engineering notebook. What are they trying to accomplish that day? What are the next steps and timeline for those steps? If we've had recent competitions, they don't get the robot until they write in the engineering notebook. And so you can see a timeline here. And it's certainly their best guess as to how long it takes to do things. Early in the year, I think they don't do a good job from a timeline standpoint. But as they get better over time, as they do it longer, I think they do get better. Why do Westchester teams do well? Skills. All teams must do the skills. They must do driver skills. They must do coding skills. We take the time to teach them. The first year we did mod kit. This last year we did Robot C, and now that VEX IQ code blocks is out uh, for a full year, we're going to move to that. I believe it has a lot of value, uh, a lot of support. There's a lot of uh, detail there that uh, works well. I believe there's a lot of tutorials online, which really will help the students. It also will allow us through our iPads, we believe, to have one or two iPads of each of the teams. Those teams be able to code on their iPad and use Bluetooth to download to the robot itself directly without the tether cable. 
So we think we have some advantages there. But all teams learn to code. Most of the students learn to code. Uh, there are probably a couple who don't, but most do. Driver and programming skills required for each team at each event. So when we go to the events, not only do they do the teamwork challenge, but they do driver and programming skills. Uh, we also do videotaping the coding runs during practice to make corrections easier, whether it be driver skills or coding or even teamwork challenges. Again, it's just easier to see what you've done on a videotape than try to remember. Why do Westchester teams do well? Behavior expectations. The coaches take the time individually with students. Generally, both of the coaches work with the students, maybe one-on-one. -on -one. Maybe we take the whole team off to a different place in the building. And we have some very serious discussions about behavior, correct behavior, uh, teamwork, working together instead of against each other. Uh, discussions of, uh, you know, two people want to do this and three want to do that, and uh, trying to tell the students they, as a team, need to figure out how to work through some of these conflicts, and it shouldn't be the coaches who figure out those conflicts. They need to work through it. Sometimes what they try won't work. And sometimes they will work, and the other members who were not in favor of it will gain some respect. Obviously, if in the end uh, we do move students between teams early on, uh, we do move you know them to different places, either due to conflict or due to skills needs. But in the end, if we can't get students to uh, behave, obviously expulsion from robotics is the final straw. We were asked to conclude our presentation with some general advice of things that we wish we knew when we were in our first few years as coaches. I'm sure that I was personally told many of these things, but living them was what really made me realize how important they are. One. Don't be afraid to switch up the teams you take to each event. For example, if we had two events coming up in one month, the first event might be all of our teams who had already qualified for state, and the second event could be teams who hadn't qualified yet. That way our teams who are still looking to qualify weren't competing against our teams who had already won excellence in teamwork champion awards. This is one of the main things that helped us to have so many different teams this season that won excellence awards and teamwork champion awards. Second, you want to provide feedback on the mock interviews and the engineering design notebooks throughout the season so that the teams can improve. If I had just finished up interviewing one of my teams, I would hand them a paper filled with notes that I took during our interview. It would include some things that I thought they did really well, and then also some things that they could improve on. So if I saw that one student was talking the entire time, I would note that, and that would in turn tell the teams that they need to do a better job of all sharing their ideas instead of just having one person talking the entire time. Also, you want to sign up for as many competitions as you can, even if you feel like your robot or team isn't ready yet. This will provide a valuable experience that can help your team later on in the season. Um, it's always beneficial to sign up for a competition, even if your teams really um, aren't ready. I know this was one of the main things that I was told a lot in my first and second year, and it's something that I didn't do enough of. So um, that's why I wanted to make sure to get it in this slide. It also, I think this is probably the most important piece of advice that I can give. Don't be afraid to ask for help from other experienced coaches. So in my personal experience, other VEX coaches are always more than willing to help and answer any questions that I had. In fact, many of the coaches that I have reached out to in the past are attending this conference or even presenting at it this week. Each school also has to figure out how to use their teachers, volunteers, 
parents, et cetera, to fulfill the many roles listed. So we talked about a lot of different things that we do at our school from the mock interviews, looking through the notebooks, um, recording the students as they're doing their coding, um, just, I mean, general behavior of the kids. So there's a lot of things that need to be done um, at our practices every week. And if we only had one person, it would be impossible to do. So a lot of um, the things that we're able to do, we can because we reach out to other teachers, parents, things like that to help us fulfill all of these roles that we need. Also, don't try to change everything about your team all in one year. So starting small is gonna make everything seem more manageable. Then you can focus on adding um, one thing at a time. So maybe this year you really want your team to focus on completing an engineering notebook. So I know that at least kind of locally for us, um, engineering notebooks don't seem to be that common. So we're up in Northwest Indiana. Um, we hosted an invitational that was a lot of teams from um, our area and that was our club teams. Only six engineering design notebooks were submitted. Five of them came from our teams. So that just goes to show that there's not um, a lot of teams that are doing that in the area. So maybe this next year, that's what you want to start working on is engineering design notebooks. Then the year after that, you can focus on adding in coding. So teaching your students to code so that they can autonomously program their robot. But don't try to throw everything in at one year, otherwise you'll get overwhelmed and everything can just kind of fall apart then. So just kind of focus on one change each year, something new you want to do for your team. Here are the links to different resources that we referred to or took information from for our presentation in case anyone would like to go and look at things a little bit more in depth. So the first link is for the skills rankings. Second link will take you to the rubric for the design award. The third link is the judges guide. And then the final link will take you to the STEM research project. Thank you so much for attending our presentation. We now want to conclude with some time for Q&A. So does anyone have any questions or things that you would like us to clarify about our presentation?